Hey class, how's it going? This is a quick um, video about quantifying force diagrams. When I say quick, I really mean it. We'll go over a few examples of how to quantify them. And um, if you were in class today, we already discussed probably about the first half to a little bit more. Um, so just skip more towards the end. I'll put the, the timing down when we actually talk about ramp problems. That's going to be the video that you're going to, or that's going to be the part that you want to watch. Um, so we have these things called force diagrams, and um, the biggest thing uh, in this video is going to be how to calculate them. And it all starts off with the force of gravity. You'll see that what we need to do is we need to come up with a way of calculating the force of gravity, and then basically every other force can come from there in our force diagrams. Um, also, we're going to look at using using trig and incline um, plane problems. Um, understanding that trig is a very important thing with vectors. If you have any questions about vectors, you can watch that video before um, where we use soca toe in order to do that. So let's jump right in. Um, the first part about any force diagram situation is that you're going to have to calculate Fg. Um, Fg, um, as we saw in our lab, has a relationship to mass that is um, it's a direct proportion, being that as mass increases, the force due to gravity is going to increase with it. And we notice that the slope of this graph is equal to a number that is pretty common for us is 9.8 newtons per kilogram. The first thing that I want to do is remember where that connection actually occurs. That connection occurs in the acceleration versus mass graph, where it is 9.8 meters per second squared on over here. Um, the thing to not, um, the thing to note is these are not the same. Um, in this graph, um, we saw that as mass increased, the acceleration stayed the same, being that any object will fall with the same acceleration um, as long as it's near the surface of the Earth. This Fg versus mass graph tells us that as the mass increases, the force of gravity increases. So notice that this is force of gravity. This is acceleration due to gravity. Um, those are different, but they are connected, and we're going to actually see that connection later on in um, Unit 5, so you can look for that um, later. Uh, of course, I want to keep the same color scheme. I always do. Um, so that is the connection here, and the biggest thing is we get a mathematical model that says Fg is equal to this 9.8 newtons per kilogram times mass. And this tells us if I know the mass, I can calculate any Fg, and you're going to notice that in our example problem in just one second. So let us cruise on over, take a look at the example problem. In this situation, I can ask two questions. I can ask, what is the tension force here? And I can also ask, what force would I have to pull up on this? And whenever you're doing a force di or whenever you get asked anything about forces, the first thing you should always do is draw a force diagram. And again, if you're struggling with force diagrams, there's a video on that. Take a look at that thing. So your force diagram for this thing should be Fg going down on the box by Earth. And you have Ft going up in this situation on the box. Um, by the rope. And once we draw this in, we realize that we are either, in this case I should have told you, but this box is at rest, and we know that those two forces are going to be equal. Then in order to quantify our force diagram, like I said, is it all revolves around Fg. We can calculate Fg as long as we have the mass, which you notice is 10 kilograms. So we go 9.8 newtons per kilogram times the 10 kilograms, and you realize that this is going to give you 98 newtons of force. And because of our force diagram, you notice that that 98 newtons is equal to the 98 newtons right here as the tension. So if I had to answer the question in the tension, it would be easily stated that the tension is 98 newtons in the rope. The other thing is, how much would I have to pull down on this? Well, there is something to note. Pulleys, and I'm going to write this down here, uh, pulley system, um, what they do is they redirect forces. So you'll see that normally if I had to um, lift this box up, I would have had to pull up on the rope. But 
But now this pulley actually redirects it, so now I do not have to pull up. I can actually pull at an angle or pull straight down or do something like that. So key idea to note, pulleys redirect forces, and you can see that directly in here. So that means I would have to pull down with a, or hold down with a force of 98 no newtons in order to keep this box at rest. So that is a very quick, easy force diagram of how to quantify it and realize that we can use that to calculate things. Um, the last thing, and this is the, probably the hardest situation, is an inclined plane problem. So normally you have a box, let's keep that same box, 10 kilogram box sitting on here, and um, let's say it's at rest. And so in this situation, what we would want to do is draw a force diagram again for it. And you will note, going on over and drawing in our axes, you're going to notice um, that there is this angle theta in there that is going to have to go into our force diagram. So let's just quickly go through this. We have FG pulling down on the box by Earth. We have FN going up and to the right. It is always 90 degrees to the surface, so FN on the box by the ramp. Remember, it's called a normal force, so it should always be normal to... Uh, the surface there, so that is why it goes off like that. And because it's at rest, we know there must be this frictional force going off in this direction, FFS, on the box by uh, the surface or the ramp in this case. And remember, whenever we're doing a force diagram, we always ask ourselves, um, how do I break it up? I need to break up my forces that are not on axes. So you notice FG is the only force that I'm going to have to break up. So what I do is I draw on my Y axis, which goes right here. So that is FGY that is sitting on the Y axis, and my X axis, which goes here, FGX. And we say that FG is broken up. Um, so we put the tilde through it. Um, remember, the key idea is whenever you draw on this X and Y components, they should always meet 90 degrees to each other. The other thing to note is FGX is always parallel to the X axes that I drew in here, and FGY is always parallel or on the Y axes there. So I draw it in like this, and then what I can say is because this object is at rest, I know that that um, FFS is equal to FGX, and I know FGY is equal to FN. Now, remember, the whole point of this is to quantify. So in order to quantify this force diagram, um, what I need to do is i got to put numbers in here. First number that I know 100% is FG. Remember, my FG calculation is 9.8 newtons per kilogram times mass, which is 10 kilograms, and we still get our 98 newtons there. So I know this force is 98 newtons. Now here's the problem, is where do I put everything else? Normally in a problem like this, they might give you the angle. They might tell you that this is 10 degrees. And remember, if I know anything about triangles, if I know a side and an angle, I can go through and get the other two sides. So the question is, where does that 10 degrees sit? What I want you guys to do right now is look at this force diagram and predict, or go through maybe some geometric pieces that that might allow you to say where that goes. I'm going to say this is a very challenging piece, but what we will do is we will come up with a defined way of always saying the angle must always go here as long as it's sitting in where we, we have it. So take a shot at that. We're going to look at this in just one second. So pause it. Give it a shot. So what I'm going to do in order to do this, I'm going to draw in the actual ramp. Remember, I'm going to call this theta. We said it might be 10 degrees. It could be anything. Um, so I'm just going to call it theta. Theta refers to an angle, so it could be any angle. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop down FG like I had in the picture, and I'm just going to continue it down so you notice something pretty cool about this. You notice if I continue that down, this becomes 90 degrees, right? That's our right angle. And then, because I know things about triangles, because I'm a smart geometry student, I would say that this total is 180. Well, that's 180. That means this must be 90 minus theta. 
because 90 is left in this situation in, um, between these two angles, and uh, it's 90 minus theta because the theta is sitting on over here. Well, if I draw that in, then I can, what I can do is I can not move the screen anymore, go back, and draw in where FGY sat. FGY is right here, and you realize something. You realize that this right here is 90 degrees. Oh, how convenient, because if this is 90 minus theta, and that's 90 degrees, guess what's going to sit on this side? That has to be theta. So what I realize and what I get out of this, and the main idea is understanding that the theta, right, the angle of the ramp, is always between FG and F, G, Y. So that means in any force diagram that I draw in a ramp, keep this in mind, this is a ramp situation where the angle is right there, what I can deduce is I can deduce that theta is always going to be between F, G and F, G, Y. This is a proof that does that. So that means if I were to draw in any F, G, no matter what the um, situation is in terms of a ramp, if I draw in even my F, G, X going this direction, direction and my FGY going this direction, you notice that, again, as long as this is X and this is Y, there's a couple of situations you got to just make sure that you have your X is always the, um, the axes that the ramp is at. That means theta is going to sit between FG and FGY, so it sits down there. Notice in this other diagram, theta is going to sit right in there between FG and FGY. And now you realize if I know that angle, let's call that 10 degrees. I'm going to zoom in on this so we can get a better understanding. If that is 10 degrees sitting right in there, and I know this is 98, we know that too zoomed in, I guess. We know that, okay, this is 98 newtons, this is 10 degrees. Using SOCATO, I could get FGX, and if I can get FGX, I can get FFS. Oh, how nice is that? Zoomed in, if I know this is 10 degrees, I know that, well, 98, we can use some SOCATO in order to get FGY, which then will give me my normal force as well. So this is a very nifty way on how to use angles to solve for other forces in force diagrams. So, in recap, I know this was kind of a long video, however, um, just note that once we're able to calculate FG, life kind of opens up in terms of force diagrams for ramp problems or um, tension problems. So thanks for listening, hope you got a lot out of this, um, and if you got any questions, bring them into class. Thanks.